Hi everybody. I know it's been a little bit since my last video. It's partly because I've been distracted, been really busy at work, busy with the kids. We just got back from vacation. And also, I bought the Scion XP. It's a 2006 with 197,000 miles. I paid $3,900 for it. It was extremely filthy inside when I bought it. There was mud, sticky stuff, trail mix, melted chocolate, raisins, uh, dog hair, anything you can imagine. This car was really filthy. I took it home and I just felt the heebie-jeebies on me because <laughs> it was just sticky. Everything was sticky. So what I ended up doing is uh, I steam cleaned the interior three times over. Each time a little bit less mud and dirt came off to the point where I thought it was clean enough for my family. Um, it's a funny story how I ended up with this car. So we were going to take a cruise to Alaska out of San Francisco and basically all the long-term parking lots state, you know, don't leave any of your belongings showing and people have these terrible reviews about all the windows getting busted out and so forth, right? And I didn't want to take my wife's RAV4 Prime because I didn't want to get it messed up while parking for two weeks in San Francisco. And also, I wanted to take the Toyota Sequoia, but when I found a more secure parking lot in San Francisco, they wouldn't allow the Sequoia because it's too tall. They had a height restriction on their vehicles. So I thought, you know what? I wanna find something really inexpensive that I can park in San Francisco and not worry about. And something in general I can just take around anywhere and not think about. My office is in the ghetto. So if I ever have to go in the office, I would much rather drive a cheap kind of throwaway car. Throwaway meaning I don't wanna throw it away, but if something happened to it, I wouldn't be devastated by it either. So this sign on XB kind of fit the bill. I didn't think I would like it as much as I do, but anyways, I rushed into buying it before our vacation. I got it all cleaned up for our long trip, and the four of us, me, my wife, and my two kids fit in here just fine. Tons of leg room, tons of headroom. You know, there's the, the sense of space in here is like really crazy. It's really nice. Um, but we also fit two weeks worth of luggage in this car with all four of us. What we did is we stood up duffel bags tall ways in the back uh, hatch and everything fit. It was really crazy. So despite this car having a really small footprint, it's packaged incredibly well. And that's probably why it appeals to so many people, right? Because I started reading on Facebook groups and things and I noticed everybody loves this car. It's like for the young 16 year old getting his first car, it's a DJ with a whole bunch of DJ equipment that they want to be able to load and unload quickly. Um, we even have elderly members that just wanted a car that they can easily get in and out of. Someone that lives in the city that you know needs to park in tight spaces. Someone that lives out in the country that just likes having a car that's easy to work on. It just appeals to so many people. And I didn't understand it at first, but now that I'm driving it, oh man, this is really convenient and nice. Um, if you've been following my channel, I recently had a BMW Z3, which I really enjoyed, but I couldn't fit my family in here. This car came pretty much stock, except it had some Sparco aftermarket wheels with old cracked tires, and it has a Super Trap muffler. I don't know if you can hear the muffler right now. Let me rev it up a little bit. So I changed the engine air filter and the cabin air filter, right? 
the previous owner told me that he recently changed the oil in the car. So I decided not to change the oil because it looks pretty clean. And then I thought I would change the transmission fluid, but the transmission actually shifts really smoothly. It goes into gear really smooth. None of the gears grind. The only time I can get it to grind is if I'm really bringing it out in second gear. Like if I'm letting it rev up to like five and a half thousand, six thousand, and quick shift lane to third, it'll grind. But if I let the revs drop a little bit, it doesn't grind, it's really smooth. So I think the synchros are worn, but not done. <laughs> if I have any complaint, it's that it's underpowered a little bit. But gosh, like I can't imagine this car with an automatic transmission. I've heard people on the forum say the automatic transmission is just a dog, that it's just real slow. The nice thing about manual transmission is I can hold the gear, right? Obviously. So if I'm going up a hill, I might rev it up to 4,000 RPMs or so, and it seems to do pretty well up a hill. The biggest hill that it's encountered in my ownership is um, going up I-80 East, right? If you're leaving the Bay Area and you leave Vallejo, California, right? There's this big hill that goes up the freeway. I had to drop it into fourth gear. There was no way it could make it up that hill in fifth gear, right? But once I dropped it into fourth, it held the speed pretty well. I went up the hill around 70 miles an hour, and it was no problem. It downshifts real nice. And this brings me up to my second complaint, if you can call it a complaint, is the flywheel is a little bit heavy for my taste, but I get that this isn't really a performance car. I would like it if it had a lighter flywheel, because maybe then it would rev up a little faster, revs would come down a little faster, because I can't quick shift this car, right? It has 197,000 miles on it, and I want to preserve the synchros and the transmission for as long as I can, right? So I'm not going to shift it real hard. I'm going to let the revs drop and really let the clutch be, be as accurate as possible, right? So just like that, I got to keep it real smooth. I think if I abuse this transmission, I could probably destroy it <laughs> pretty quickly. But it's been fine. I have to remind myself this isn't a performance car. But let me wrap it up for you a little bit. shifted around 5,500 RPM from second to third. Oh, and the other thing, nice surprise I found was when I buy a car with high mileage like this, I expect to change the spark plugs and maybe some of the ignition coils if, if they're getting old. And when I pulled the spark plugs, it actually had brand new Iridium spark plugs. And I thought, geez, on a $3,900 car, I wouldn't have even bothered buying the iridium plugs i would have bought some cheap ngk platinum plugs for like you know three four dollars each right lots of brake pads left in the front and i pop the drum covers off and the drum brakes in the rear have lots of pad left as well and i check the drum brakes because i put wheel spacers in the back and i'll kind of show you that in a little bit so let me hop out of the car and i'll walk around some of the things i've done let's see So like I mentioned in the car, I put wheel spacers in the back. You can kind of see the stance right here. It's actually pretty even with the front tires. So when I was reading on the forums, I read that the rear track is actually more narrow than the front track, at least optically it does. So initially I thought maybe a 20 millimeter spacer would fit nicely, right? But the 20 millimeter spacers didn't fit that well. So I went ahead and bought 25 millimeter or one inch spacers and it fit perfectly. And it actually looks pretty decent. Looks about right, you know? And I know a lot of people switch the taillights out to aftermarket taillights, but I think these look pretty good. I don't mind the stock ones, so I left it as is. And like I mentioned before, here's the, tr the super trap muffler. And I've had kids stop me and go, hey, how does the exhaust come out? It's all blocked up. And then I have to tell them that, oh, well, these mufflers came with a tunable disc system. You 
can see they're all corroded and old now, but um, the discs allow dissipation of the exhaust gases through the sides, and they always think that's cool. Next thing here, did a wiper delete because I found that with the stock windshield wiper in the way, it kind of blocks some of the visibility out of the back window. So I decided to take it out and put this plug here. I have a Greta Thunberg sticker, which is always fun. Next thing, real common, these hatch handles are broken in most Scion XBs that I looked at. And so this one was broken, it was no exception. I went ahead and bought an aftermarket one. The fitment is like a B plus fitment, I would say. It's not perfect, but it's still pretty good. It's acceptable. And I wanna point out that the aftermarket one is a little bit smaller than the OEM. So like the OEM pushed up and scraped right against the edges here and actually went right up to the top. And I noticed with the aftermarket, it doesn't quite make it all the way. But the big benefit to the aftermarket is there's a big metal piece under here that's reinforced. And the stock one is held on by two plastic clips, whereas the aftermarket is held on by two screws. So it should be much more secure and last longer. And here's the trunk area. Let's see here. I have the scissor jack and you know the tools here. And this is the area where we were able to fit two weeks worth of luggage. What we did is we stood up our duffel bags tall ways, you know, all the way up. You know, so we fit three large duffel bags side to side. And we are we were able to fit two weeks worth of stuff in here, which is awesome. Let me close the hatch. Next thing, you'll notice the window visors. The visors look really cool. And the hood visor. The previous owner had already installed the hood visor and the window visors which is a nice touch i've thought about maybe spray painting or getting a new grill but i'm pretty happy with them right now and this car was so filthy there were these layers of dirt on the hood it was so bad that i actually had to steam it because i couldn't get it off with just warm water or even just tepid water i actually had to steam it with hot water to get all the dirt off that's how dirty this car was when i bought it pretty incredible right This door handle, when I bought it, was cracked. There was a big crack right here. So got this new door handle from a pick and pull. I replaced the locking mechanism. I swapped it with the broken door handle. It's kind of a pain to take off because there are these rods inside the door. Door panel that were probably on there for over, you know, close to 20 years now. They were really, you know, pretty stubborn to get off. So I squirted some WD-40 on the rods to pry them loose. The fan just kicked on because I've been idling for a while. It's pretty hot out today. So this is my normal seating position. Lots of room. And then for the back passenger, check out this leg room. It's freaking crazy. It's huge in here, right? That's the best part about this car. You have tons of headroom and you have tons of leg room. This is more spacious than our RAV4 Prime, which is hard to believe because the RAV4 Prime, at least the outside dimensions are so much larger, right? I wanna point out that I got a new shift boot. The original shift boot was torn and ragged, so I went ahead and bought this cheap one off of Amazon. I think it was 15 bucks. I painted the shifter gloss black because it was kind of a kind of worn out steel with a little bit of surface rust. So I decided to just paint it gloss black and it looks pretty good. I have the stock shift knob still and it feels good in my hand. So I decided to leave it stock as is. The previous owner had an Android Auto head unit installed already, which is great because I really appreciate that. And here it is. No check engine lights, 197,976 miles. And here's the best part, man. So since this car is a box, I went with a squared out rear view mirror. And with this convex rear view mirror, and it's much wider than stock. I basically have no blind spots. Look at how far I can see. It's really sweet, right? So I'm actually really happy with that. That mirror made a huge difference, right? So yeah, overall, this is a really cool car because 
I have great visibility. I can fit my whole family in here. It runs really nice. And it was only $3,900. So I think we got a pretty good deal. If I can drive this for about two years daily and get most of my money back, I think it'll be probably one of the best deals right now in cars in general. I know the looks are really subjective and polarizing. And at first I thought they looked ridiculous too, but after driving it, man, I really love it. I didn't think I would like it this much. I mainly bought it for vacation and driving it into the hood, into the ghetto where my office is. But shoot, it's really fun. Anyways, that catches you up on my life and what's been going on. We're back from Alaska, kind of back to the normal grind at home. Thanks for joining me on this video. If you have any questions about the Scion XP, man, I've been reading a ton about these cars as I've been fixing mine up. So go ahead and drop me any questions or comments and I'm pretty sure I can find an answer for you. Thanks for joining us. Have a nice day. Bye.